There's committee. Roll call, please. Calling the roll, Mr. Gallagher. Here. Mr. Greenspan. Here. Mr. Germana. Here. Mr. Harrison. Here. Ms. Conwell. Here. There is a quorum. Public comment? Uh, no, Mr. Chair, no one is signed in. In your packet, you have the minutes of June 21st. If they're in order, I'll accept the motion. So moved. Second. All in favor? Aye. Against? Thank you. Resolution 2016-0122. Resolution number 2016-0122, making the Cuyahoga County 911 Consolidation Shared Services Fund Award to City of South Euclid on behalf of Heights Hill Crest Communication Center in the amount not to exceed $1 million for public safety answering point consolidation support for the period 8-1-2016 through 8-1-2017. Director Kearney, do we have you here to speak on this? It's got a nice ring to it. This first time I got to call you Director <laughs> Kearney in public. Again, congratulations. There we go. Uh, myself and Director Krause, I think, will be uh, answering any questions Mr. you have Krause? on this. Director Krauss. Oh, direct. Oh, hair director. <laughs> <laughs> so what, do we, what do we have here? So this agreement or contract in front of you is for the million dollars for the EDGE group. Uh, over the last year, public safety and justice services, along with uh, regional collaboration, have been working on the public safety answering point uh, or dispatch consolidations throughout the county. Uh, really, our vision is we see uh, eight regional centers throughout the county. Um, two of those are Cleveland and CECOMS. And then additionally, there would be three on the east side and three on the west side. The three on the west side is the West Shore communities. Right now, they operate, um, the police operate independently, but the fire are consolidated. And that's something that we're uh, discussing with those communities or plan to in the near future. Uh, the second West Side Communities um, or Dispatch Center would be the Strongsville Center uh, that is located in Strongsville and has four municipalities that are dispatched out of that center. Uh, and then there's also Parma that currently supports Parma, Parma Heights, and Brooklyn, and they expect to have Brook Park uh, within the next year. Uh, they're waiting on Brook Park to consolidate. Uh, as far as the east side of the county, there is the Southeast Court Communication Center that's in Bedford Heights City Hall, and that has four communities, which is Maple Heights, Garfield Heights, Bedford, and Bedford Heights. There's also in Bedford the Chagrin Valley Dispatch, which I'm sure many are aware of here. They have 13 or 14 communities that are dispatched out of there, including large cities such as the city of Euclid. Uh, and just recently, they have uh, the city of Solon, and Twinsburg that will be operating out of uh, that dispatch center. So again, going back to that number eight, the final consolidation that we see would be the request that's in front of you today or the contract for a million dollars. The four edge communities that are part of this request are um, Cleveland Heights, University Heights, Shaker Heights, and South Euclid. We have been working with the point of contact on this contract, which is Kevin Nieder, the chief of South Euclid Police Department. Uh, he's here and we can call him up in a minute and have him speak if that works for council. Uh, this funding would come out of the wireless fund. So it would be the entire million would come out of the uh, 911 wireless fund that the county does receive. Uh, and we did require the applicant to itemize each of the items up to a million dollars and so it Although it would be an upfront check, there are itemized items, and we do do an audit as we had in the past with this shared services funding. Uh, so I think now, if, if that's okay with you, we can ask Chief Nieder to come up and speak a little bit more in detail about the project. Uh, just uh, sure. one question. I don't know if anybody has questions for uh, Brandy specifically on this. Um, Mr. Germano. Thank you, uh, Director Kearney. Uh, I've always heard five, now I just heard eight. Uh, is this official? That so, we're, we're, we're going with eight and not having to get down to five? Um, so I can speak about that and maybe Director Krause also. I think eight with the last administration, uh, that was the initial number. We started off at 48, or excuse me, five. We started off at 48 and it was the expectation then to get down to five centers. Uh, what we have seen is over the last few years, there has been funding to support a lot of these centers 
And we've seen a good number of groups come together and work together, and these have, a lot of these kind of have organically happened. Um, so it's looking to us like eight might be a more ideal number. Now some of these other dispatch centers might still operate independently. Um, you know, some of those cities don't want to consolidate, and we understand that, but we really see these current eight centers that I discussed as true regional centers that all have room for expansion, additional unaffiliated communities could come into. I guess my, my, my other part of that question is I, I thought the state was pushing for five. Have they uh, agreed to the eight for Cuyahoga County since we're so large? So the five, the uh, Ohio Revised Code says that we cannot have more than five by 2018. However, that specifically is wireless PSAPs. So a wireless PSAP is uh, currently defined as the first point of contact when you call 911, the first person who answers that call. So actually in Cuyahoga County, there's only two wireless PSAPs, uh, which is CECOMs and Cleveland. Now that Cleveland in the, in the core of Cleveland takes their own calls directly. So we are still meeting that mandate. We only have two. Um, if in fact we were to go up to the eight regional centers, um, the, the legislation says that we could only support five of them with the funding. You cannot support more than five wireless PSAPs with the money that's, it's specific to the money that's received. So the annual money that we receive for wireless, which is approximately $2.8 million, um, you can only use that money to support no more than five wireless PSAPs. If you're trying to support, for example, all eight with that funding, uh, then they would uh, uh, reduce the funding by half or 50%. So the legislation is not for all dispatch centers. It's specific to wireless dispatch centers. Well, certainly uh, not all counties are created equal, and we have until 2018 to get that corrected. Um, I, I think also, too, you know, historically we're trying to mirror. Um, we have 11 council districts, so we want to make sure that we're uh, where possible, trying to mirror uh, the council districts. We have eight planning districts uh, throughout the county, so we, we're also trying to overlay that as well in looking at the, the dispatch centers to overlay the, 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 the uh, county planning districts. And additionally, you know, we really have um, areas that have historically uh, worked together for many, many years. Police, fire, mutual aid, actual aid, uh, so we wanted to mirror that. You know, the, the, the West Shore area has been working together for many, many years. Uh, the Southwest area in Strongsville is a historic area that they work together. Parma, our new center in Parma historically has worked with those uh, communities. Uh, the Chagrin Valley has been uh, working together for uh, many, many years, all of those communities in, in mutual and actual aid. Uh, the southeast area, the Garfield, Maple, Bedford, Bedford Heights, historically ha has always worked together. And this piece, um, this is the last piece that we call it the Heights Hillcrest. Uh, it's, a, it's really the missing area, and that's why we're so excited to have these four communities because um, many people don't know, but uh, Shaker Heights, University Heights, and Cleveland Heights have been dispatching together uh, for many years. As a matter of fact, though two of the communities have been uh, dispatching together in Cleveland Heights for since 1982. So these are cities that historically have they have they have all all mutual aid, all actual aid, fire, police. They work together on a on a everyday basis. So we wanted to be able to take advantage of, of the historic nature of those four communities and really reach out to both the Heights and the Hillcrest area because there's still a few uh, unaffiliated communities uh, that are now in the Hillcrest area, which covers. You know, there's Highland Heights, there's Mayfield, there's Mayfield Village, there's Richmond Heights. So we want to be able to have a dispatch center for those communities. They're, they're sort of waiting uh, to get this center uh, up and running. So the, the, we want to take advantage of the historical areas that are through, throughout the county. And that really comes to about, you know, the seven or eight areas. Well, Mr. Chairman, I, I definitely support going to eight uh, the district I re represent, Parma, uh, probably with our population, we're probably not counting Cleveland and in the Cuyahoga County, but the largest population of people that were being served. And, and certainly Cuyahoga County has got more municipalities than any other county by far. So uh, 
I think we need to, to, to work and see if we could get an amendment to that uh, state, state law. <laughs> Thank you. Here to director, uh, wanted to ask two questions. One, what's happening to East Cleveland? I didn't hear any of those that it was uh, pushed to. Are they operating independently at the moment? They are. Their police and fire are dispatched out of their police station currently. Okay. And the city of Cleveland, you stated, had two. Um, because it's so large in nature, where are those two? Did you say I, two? No, I apologize. Okay. I must have misspoke, Councilwoman. Okay. It's uh, the city of Cleveland is one. They do dispatch okay. for some other municipalities for um, Bratton all fire and but um, and Lynnhurst okay. or excuse me Lindale uh, but they're just one okay thank you just a just, yes, sir this one question Mr. I'm curious you say Euclid is a part of the chagrin Valley why is that why, why is Euclid participating uh, with the chagrin Valley that's quite a ways away you have so, the high school press here Sure, absolutely. So a number of years ago when Euclid was ready to make the jump, uh, I would say that Chagrin Valley was really progressive. They've been doing this since the 60s. Yeah. And, and really with the technology, you can dispatch from anywhere. You really can. Mm -hmm. I mean, the maps come up. It's, it's much different than it was, you know, even 10 years ago. Okay. Uh, there are some benefits at times, especially with respect to fire and automatic aid when you're dispatching within the same center of contiguous communities. Mm -hmm. Uh, so that could be something that they might want to entertain later, but at that point in time, the nearest center for them was, in fact, Chagrin Valley that was operational. And, you know, Chagrin Valley has done an excellent job for them, I'll say. Uh, I'm sure. I'm just looking at, you know, needing that help and support. The communities are part of the Chagrin Valley uh, Dispatch Center uh, are, are quite a ways away from Euclid if they need that particular help. I would think South Euclid is right down the hill, you know, going north. Uh, uh, Cleveland Heights is, is on the board also, you know, so how you go Cleveland Heights, you go all intertwine up in uh, parts of uh, uh, the, 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 the east side there. So that was just a thought. I just didn't understand why they were, were there. So I, I get it. Thank you. It was, an, again, an option then, um, but, you know, things may change in the future. If that's up to them. Okay. Where, where did we land on the actual facility to house the, uh, the dispatch uh, services? So they initially had proposed for the agreement that's in front of you that it would be dispatched out of the Suburban Community Center in South Euclid. I apologize. Out of South Euclid. However, um, somewhat recently, Metro Health acquired a building, uh, which is actually in Shaker Heights. Cleveland Excuse Heights. me, Cleveland Heights. Yeah. I apologize. Um, and I think Chief Needert is able to provide some additional detail on that, that the mayors are kind of weighing through the different options on the two sites because one did come in such last minute. But their commitment to moving forward with the four cities, police, and fire is definitely, you know, 100% of yeah, the project. Absolutely, and I appreciate that. I was just kind of when I know there was some discussion uh, since Metro Health had took over the building. Mm -hmm. Just didn't know where, where that had landed. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Actually, to help answer Mr. Harrison's question, is as we progress through this from the beginning, what you find out or what we found out is there there are rivalries and there are personality conflicts throughout the county. <laughs> and I think Euclid, uh, for whatever reason, I know the mayor wanted to go one way, the council wanted to go the other. So you also have that political aspect of it, although it, it's yeah. true to be said that you can go anywhere. Mm -hmm. And it really doesn't matter, which leads back to when we first started being... Um, being the layperson that I am, I still hold on to five, and, I, and I'm honest with all these folks that in historically, as we move forward, it's going to be five, and three is, are going to be out, which is why I've fought like crazy to start with five, because I think we're spreading dollars unnecessarily through the, throughout the eight, knowing that three are going to be dropped. And I just put that out there for everybody so they understand it. Um, just because you have it now doesn't mean you're going to have it in the future. And that's not going to be dictated by us. It will be dictated by Columbus and dollars and cents. And I, I, and it wasn't you. It was your predecessor who made what I consider to be a huge mistake, although I understood it, again, with rivalries and personalities and politics being involved. I understand it, but sometimes you just got to put your heels in and, and, and lead 
as opposed to uh, let everybody go out and do what they want to do. But we're here, and it's a good move, and it's great what we're doing. And, and again, thank you. Had we not had you, I don't think we would be as far along as we are. Oh, and uh, and I think people that are that have been on the ground with you on this would uh, would agree with that. So with that, um, Chief, did you have anything to say? I can approach. I'll keep it brief. My you, name is Kevin Niedert. I'm the Chief of Police for the City of South Tupelo. I certainly would like to thank County Council here for the opportunity, and also would ask for their support on this proposal. As you can imagine, this is a, a very uh, important issue for the communities that are involved. As Brandy had indicated, you know we're we're committed to this process. We want to see it work. Um, one thing I'd like to point out to County Council is is that these communities are, are going to put in a minimum of four hundred thousand dollars of their own money into this project. So it's not just county money that we're relying on for the project. We're also putting up some money of our own. Um, one of the things that we're also in the process of, of talking about, which I think the county would be excited about, is Brandy had mentioned earlier about CVD. CVD is a rather large dispatch center. We are working closely with CVD to look to mirror their environment so that we could be the backup for the Chagrin Valley Dispatch Center should a, a natural disaster or something occur that would make them inoperable. They could operate out of our site and vice versa if there were something that were to happen in, in the Heights Hill Crest Regional Dispatch Center. And then the last thing I'd like to, to address here is there was some conversation about location. We were really committed to University Suburban Health Center, which is at 1611 South Green Road in the city of South Euclid. Um, in the 11th hour, uh, Metro Health had, had purchased a facility in Cleveland Heights, and they had pitched a, a proposal to us. As you can imagine, uh, this is a pretty significant project, and it was important for all the mayors and managers involved in this to take a look at this, this, this proposal from, from Metro Health. And we're in the process of vetting that and hope to have a decision tomorrow. We're having a meeting amongst the, the mayors and managers to try to finalize that location discussion. But if anybody has any questions, we'd be more than happy to answer them. Anyone? Thank you, sir. Thank you. Mr. Chair. Mr. Chair, just one question. Mr. To Greenspan. Director Carney. This is police fire EMS, correct? That's correct. Okay. And, and had they been operating in that form of dispatch individually prior to this consolidation? So prior to this consolidation, uh, three of the communities had a fire-only dispatch that was called ESCOM. It was in Cleveland Heights Fire. That was uh, Cleveland Heights, University Heights, and Shaker Heights. Uh, South Euclid currently independ or works independently, and then each of the other police departments were independent. So it was the fire departments that were consolidated. So just an operational question. So now they're coming together for police, fire, and EMS dispatch, which I agree with. How are they dealing, maybe the chief, maybe one who was, how are they dealing with now the walk-up window, the, the, the jail? How, how are the, although South Euclid may be, how do they deal, how are you dealing with that? Because that's always been the, the drawback we hear from police integration in is, look, we still have to have somebody at the walk-up window. We have to have, uh, you know, a jail warden. Uh, so how are you dealing with that? Each individual city is going to handle that a little bit differently. I'll, I'll speak from the perspective of South Euclid. We currently operate a 12-day holding facility, and we can house up to 11 prisoners. And we do not have a full-time jailer because of budget cuts. So our supervisors are monitoring the jail. What we're anticipating doing is, is taking those monitors that we use for the jail, put those in the new dispatch center, but also maintain monitors at the station. So I'm not as concerned with the fact of monitoring prisoners some people put more of an emphasis on that, I think, than is necessary. Quite frankly, I, I think they use it as an excuse, quite frankly. Um, to address the walk-up window, we, uh, there's a couple mechanisms. One, we could have a, a buzzer, the supervisor on station. The other is, is to have a phone that you would pick up, and that phone would just ring directly to the dispatch center. The, they could say, hey, I'm standing in South Euclid's lobby. I, I need a police officer or whatnot. So... I think these are all hurdles that we can get over pretty easily. As Brandy had indicated earlier, technology has come a long way to assist us in this process, too. So, so you believe that, that the supervisor, there will always be a physical body at the station? In, in our, in your I, I can speak for South Euclid specifically, yes. We, we more often than not have a supervisor on station. Um, it would be nice in an ideal world for that supervisor to get out a little bit more than they do, but quite frankly, with walk-up bonds and parking tickets and all the other responsibilities that the supervisor has, they very rarely get out of the station. Okay. All right. Thank you. Anyone further? 
Yes, ma'am. You good? Thanks. Ms. Simon. Hi, Chief. How are you? Hi, Brandy. Hi. The question that has come up in addition to the jail question for cities that don't want to or haven't yet agreed to consolidate was regarding transportation of the inmates downtown and how this would impact that consolidation and taking away, they still need somebody to be transporting. So how is South Euclid and Cleveland Heights and, and this um, dispatch center gonna handle that? I can tell you from South Euclid's perspective, we're transporting prisoners, so I don't think it would have a negative impact on us. Um, there's been discussion, and, and I'm sure Frank could probably come up here and talk more about it, about regionalizing the jail and having drop-off, which would probably add some convenience for each individual suburb and, and potentially eliminate the, the question that, that Mr. Greenspan brought up, and that is, is the monitoring of these jails. So it can be done. At South Euclid is still transporting despite consolidation. Correct. Correct? Okay, Correct. thank you. Thanks. Good job. Mr. Germano, you know, from, uh, and I don't know how the numbers have changed since, since I've been here six years, but I, I know uh, 911 in, in the Parma area is overwhelmingly for medical, for our ambulances. And uh, just talking in favor of the eight instead of five. I know many of the communities, uh, they go to P Parma, Uni University Hospital, Parma Medical Center, and the dispatchers are actually uh, being trained to, to do some medical evaluation and so on and so forth. So there's a lot of quarter coordination. And, uh, you know, I'm guessing that a lot of these, uh, and when we bring up Metro Health, a lot of these have to do where, where these patients uh, are going to be transported to in an emergency. So, uh, and, and I know overwhelmingly in, in Parma, I think it's three or four to one where it's 911 calls are, are, are for medical uh, versus police. Is that pretty much true in, in all districts? Do you, do you know? have information on that? It's very common. Uh, EMS calls, at least specific to the fire, um, to fire and EMS can be up to 80% of their call volume, um, you know, specific to the fire, but integrated within police. I'm not sure the exact percentage, but it is high. Okay, thank you. Mm -hmm. Anyone further? Okay, Director, what do you want to do with this? So if at all possible, in order to move forward, I don't know if it's an option to move it out of committee if, if we do receive approval for it. There is. It's just what's the emergency. Is is it necessary to move this out now, Chief? Start the Yes, we request and then suspension to a second reading. Any problems with that? Okay. If everyone's okay with that, I'll accept the motion for resolution 2016-0122 so for second reading suspension under the rules. I have a motion and a second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Against? Thank you. Thank you. Miscellaneous business? Mr. Other Chair, do you mind if I ask a question? Yes, sure. So um, thank you so much. I guess this would be addressed to either um, Mr. Bova or Mr. Krause about a meeting that was held, I believe, last week with the unaffiliated cities yet who are still discussing perhaps consolidation and how did that meeting go and is there still money available to incentivize them to consolidate? Uh, well, I'll answer the first part. Uh, we did have a meeting for all the unaffiliated, invited all the unaffiliated cities. Uh, we thought it was a great turnout uh, here in council chambers. Uh, I was spearheaded by Public Safety Justice Services, um, and each of the uh, sponsored uh, PSAPs by the county were able to present uh, a case for come to us, and, and this is why. So uh, we haven't got feedback on which way they're going to go, but uh, a lot of the mayors and, and police chiefs and fire chiefs were here. So, Thanks, Chief. 
How, how many unaffiliated are there, approximately? Good question. 30-some? Around 30. Mm. Okay. I mean, we, 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 we made it very clear to the communities um, that uh, the time has come to, to go to a regional dispatch center. I think um, those that attended, and the mostly police chiefs, fire chiefs, there was actually a few mayors that attended, unaffiliated mayors. Um, I think they came away realizing that um, you can't do it alone anymore. A, a city cannot adequately uh, dispatch uh, by themselves with the new technology available with the type of emergencies um, that are available. Um, Parma, you know, Shelly uh, at, at Parma uh, Dispatch Center brought up the recent robbery, the police robbery that they had. And the only way they could have solved the crime was through uh, the whole district and all the uh, police and, and fire that responded. Uh, Chagrin Falls recently had a murder. Uh, and the only way they were able to solve it and handle it uh, was through the Chagrin Valley Dispatch Center, all 14 communities responded to the murder. And, and that's how, uh, that's the future of public safety. And I think many of the folks that were there realized um, they can't fund it on their own. Uh, the police and fire can't do it on their own anymore. They need their neighbors uh, to respond adequately to these emergencies. Uh, we made it very clear that we're done uh, funding um, the regional centers. We said our last one is the Heights Hillcrest Group and we're committed to, but after that, um, we're done. We have our regional dispatch centers and we didn't tell them where to go, but we told them in, in, in no uncertain terms that uh, it's time to join uh, the regional dispatch center. So that was our, our, our message. And I think it was, I, I, again, I thought it was an excellent meeting. And it was the first time that they were able to see uh, the full presentations. I mean, the presentations that these regional centers made were, were tremendous. Um, Parma and, and Strongsville. Uh, you know, the Westcom, Chagrin Valley, the Southeast, uh, you know, Kevin was, was there representing the Heights Hillcrest. Uh, I think the, the folks that were there came away realizing that um, the future is in a regional center. Yes, thank you. And, and one of the mayors is from District 11 that's been opposed for the reason of actually two of them about the having a jailer for the jail. And at this point, I said, look, you can't let the perfect stand in the way of the good in the future. Nothing's going to be perfect right now because this is actually the end of it. You need to get on board. So I'm hoping that was, thank you for doing that. We, we, we did bring that up too. Right. Thanks. Anything for the I anticipate that'll be the next big step is the jail regionalization, which will take some of that concern off the table. We, after the fact, I found out we were invited to this meeting, but we did, weren't notified in a timely manner. Uh, we've been told that in the future we will be. Uh, this this committee and this council has a, has a pretty good uh, reputation, I think, in the cities as far as being able to coordinate and get people uh, together and and to easily show them the way as opposed to earlier on sh shoving it at them. So uh, we we remain available and um, with a good I hope a good reputation to help uh, smooth things over as we move forward. So uh, glitches aside, we would have been there. It was uh, some folks were notified that that. People showed up from their district, and that's a little embarrassing. That should not happen in the future, and I anticipate it won't. So uh, thank you, Mr. Bova. Uh, anything else miscellaneous? Other public comment? No, Mr. Chair, no one has signed in.